The following is a special presentation of Henrico County Public Schools. Live game coverage as the Verina Blue Devils take on the Atlee Raiders. And welcome to Verina High School. We are in for a treat tonight. Two of the best basketball teams on the guys' side. Face off as Atlee takes on the Verina Blue Devils on the road. Joining me are uh, two members from the Center for Communications and Media Relations at Verina High School. To my left, Raven Earp, and to my right, Sean Anderson. Let's talk about Verina first of all. Yes. Winners of seven out of the last eight. They had a big confidence swing and a big win Friday night. Yes, they did. At Henrico High School, they um, it was an away game and they had a very close game. It was 56-56 leading up to the last couple seconds of the game where Christian Carden, sophomore, was fouled and pushed over the game for Verina for, um, for two, two free throws. Two huge free throws. We'll see if that momentum translates into tonight. Now, Sean, on Atlee's side, they've won seven out of their last eight games, but there's one really special player of one reason why. Uh, yeah, multi-sport athlete, senior Tyler Warren. He's a six foot six, 238 pound athlete. He's an absolute beast, and he's, he, he's averaging 18.7 points, 8.8 .8 rebounds, and he's been on fire recently on fire and going to Penn State as a tight end for football. But let's meet the fourth member of our crew. Our courtside reporter, Izzy Randolph, has assistant coach Aaron Rose for the Verina Blue Devils. Izzy. Hi, I'm Isabel Rodriguez here reporting with Coach AT, boys basketball coach. What's the most rewarding part about working with the boys basketball team? Well, we're trying to be our leaders, not only on the court, but also in the community. So it's great serving them and trying to make them good individuals on and off the basketball court and great student athletes. And how do you promote positive energy in negative situations? Positive energy is always going to be more than the negative. And we want them to understand that things will happen, but always keep a positive outlook on all that they do. Thank you, Coach AT. And back to Will. All right, well done. Well done indeed, Izzy. We'll be, we'll be checking in with her throughout the game, uh, both at the half and just before uh, the half comes to an end, before the game comes to a close. She'll be bringing us uh, the best talent from courtside. Guys, what we're witnessing right now, it is senior night for a number of track athletes here at Verina High School. Uh, you guys uh, go to. Uh, you guys have any classes with any of these track athletes? Uh, I know, as both of us being varsity volleyball players, uh, Macy Spivey. I think she was the first to go. She is on the girls volleyball team, and I think there's other volleyball players on the track team. So. You know, a lot of people forget that. You know, they see the basketball court, they think they think basketball, but then you got to use for it for for volleyball, and then you've got multi-sport athletes. We were talking about Tyler Warren for Atlee, and we talk about uh, a, a lot of players, that, a, a lot of athletes at Verina play multiple sports as well, not just football and basketball or, or baseball. Tonight is going to be an interesting story, though. This is the first game back at home for Verina in nine tries. They've played eight straight games away from home, and they're finally back to Verina. Again, winning seven out of eight. Blue Devils... Uh, I talked to the coach who said no no major changes. Talked to Ken, head coach Kenneth Rudolph. He said no major changes in the lineup tonight. Same thing for head coach of Atley, Rally Axel. He says there's not going to be a lot of a lot of major changes in his lineup. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how this game shakes out. Again, first time they played was a 55-51 close game and actually Atley led late in that ball game in the fourth quarter but uh, Verina was able to persevere and I talked to coach uh, uh, I talked to coach Randolph almost said Rudolph I said I talked to coach Randolph before the game and he said you know last year Verina had six all-stars on their basketball team a lot of these guys that you're seeing coming out on the court now these guys when they went into that first game had literally less than 30 minutes of real-time action. So getting those first couple of games under their belt, the Blue Devils right now are a far different basketball team than they were at the beginning of the season.
Meanwhile, on the Atlee side, they've yet to take the court. Both teams are about to start the warm-up, which is about 10 minutes to go before the start of this one as uh, the Atlee guys come out. And again, winners of seven of their last eight games. Again, 11-7 and seven overall. So they got off to a rough start. But, I, guys, I think we're going to see a lot of 2-3 zone from Atlee in this one. They... They like to get back on defense. Uh, it'll be interesting when we see them go to the free throw line because there's some storylines there. Pretty good free throw shooting team. Uh, Verina, on the other hand, you guys have seen them, right? They like to get up and down. Yes, sir. They, um, through the JV game at least, we saw that every single player is willing to get down for the ball and take every last amount of energy they have to hustle for that ball and get any points they can. So definitely a benefit for them. What I find remarkable is Verina is a very young team. Atlee has at least eight seniors on their squad. The two leading scorers for the Verina Blue Devils are just like you guys. They're both sophomores. Uh, Alfonso Billups averaging almost 18 points a game. And as you said, the cool nickname, CC3, right? Chris yes, Carden, 11.1 points per game. With Atlee playing zone defense, so tell me how important is it going to be for Verina to be able to shoot the ball well, at least early to get him out of that zone, have guys like Venable, who came up so big against Henrico, do it again tonight. What do you think the optics are for Verina when it comes to shooting the basketball tonight? How important do you think it'll be for them early in the early going? I think they have to start it off with a couple of threes, and then they have to push the ball inside after they have Atlee guessing on what they're gonna do next. Uh, I think they have to shoot the ball extremely efficiently in order to get in Atlee's head. But yeah, they really have to rely on number one, Venable, Khaki Venable. He's their, one of their leading scorers, and he's remarkable from the three point. Well, See? we talked about uh, Atlee coming in with Tyler Warren. He's not the only one that's really made this team work but he can do it all he can shoot from outside he can shoot from inside obviously his big frame helps him quite a bit the one struggle that i had seen coming in for the atley raiders was on the offensive end when teams would press them saw them at home play against highland springs teams that really get up on your grill play really tough man-to-man -to -man defense uh, can cause atley trouble at times but don't get me wrong on atley Tyler Warren is going to be the beast in the middle, and he'll step outside as well. But if you collapse on Tyler Warren, then what you're doing is you're giving up the outside shots, and they've got some spot-up shooters that are pretty good. So we're going to have to see where this game leads. Again, we're about 6 minutes and 50 seconds to change before the start of this one. Guys, welcome to um, a crash course in live broadcast streaming television. Tell me, what's your experience been like so far trying to fill 10 minutes of air before the game even starts? Oh, it's pretty hard, not going <laughs> to lie. It, uh, has, it has definitely been a challenge. Uh, earlier this morning, I did not think it would be as difficult to talk for this long, but it definitely seems a lot more. You know what, though? But I'm going to ask you the same question in about, I don't know, 30 minutes, and you're going to be like, oh, no, this is easy. Are you kidding? <laughs> This is simple. I look forward to it. <laughs> Once the game gets going, it's a whole lot easier. Uh, one interesting fact that a lot of people may not know, the VHSL uh, for years has had eight teams in the playoffs. This year, a slight change. Ten teams make it. So you'll have a couple of buys at the top of the bracket. But expanding that field gives teams like Atlee a chance not only to make it into the tournament, but also have a pretty good seating. Uh, teams like Highland Springs uh, on the outside looking in, but still have chances to pick up some marquee wins. But, guys, this time of year, I mean, we're basically almost down to one final week of regular season play. This is it. If, if uh, Verina wants the number one seed, they're going to have to beat a really tough athlete team tonight to get to that level and, and still end up having to outpoint Henrico. Taking a look at Verina's upcoming schedule, obviously, Atley coming up in just a few minutes. They've got Armstrong at home as well on February 7th, and they follow that up with a away game at Phoebus. Meanwhile, the Atley Raiders, they still have Verina left tonight. They've got a couple left as well. 
so with about five minutes to go, Atley and Verina both on the court, still getting going. I'll tell you one thing I really like uh, about the Verina basketball team, watching them from afar, and especially when I'm getting highlights for Sportswire, if there's always somebody different, always somebody different in the stat sheet who's toting the load or toting the rock, carrying the load. There's never one guy game by game who's the number one scorer. So yes. what that does for a team, you know, you playing the game, is you got to count for everybody. You can't just say, okay, we got to take this guy out. We got to stop this guy. You can't stop Billups. You can't stop uh, Quentin Baylor. You can't stop all these guys all get all night long. So you got to pick your poison. That's a, that's an advantage to Verina, I think. What do you guys say? Something I definitely have seen in past games of Verina basketball is that all of their players have something special about them. And Coach Rose and all the other coaches really help and benefit from switching out those roles and trying to make all-around all good All-Stars. And again, last year they had six starters that are no longer here, either from transfer or graduation. So going into the offseason, a lot of these guys were playing for playing time because they didn't know if their, if their name was going to be called. They knew they were going to probably have a much bigger role in the team than they've had in years past. But as it turns out, you know, I think that really worked for them early on, kind of finding their own role, their own spot in the program, so to say, so they could really uh, be a factor early and often. And now everybody's kind of got their own role. But let's talk more, because we'll get into this as, as the game goes on. Let's talk more about what you guys do at the Verina Center uh, for Media and Communications, uh, or, <laughs> sorry, I got that reversed. <laughs> Communications and Media Relations. There we go. Uh, tell me tell me about uh, what you guys do and, and, and what the center is like. Oh, uh, we do multiple things here at the Center of Communications. Uh, first, we do, the, we do the newspaper for the school, and also we do live broadcasting like this for Henrico County. Uh, we did a football game earlier in the year, and this is our second live stream of the year. Uh, this is our first basketball game, second sport. Uh, the center has plenty of opportunities. Um, we go on field trips to do, learn about marketing. We take pic we go off on campus and we take pictures. Um, it's just, it just has everything from sports to like business. So it's really fun. Uh, Raven, you have anything else to add? Well, it's got to be it's got to be fun because I mean you guys are only in your sophomore year, so there's more to come when you're a junior and a senior, right? Yes, most definitely. Um, as knowing many upperclassmen in the center, as as well as freshmen, and being a freshman, I have definitely seen that the curriculum and the overall just rigor of the center definitely steps it up towards the end of uh, senior year. Awesome. So we are again just under two minutes away from the start of this one, Atley versus Verina. Verina got payback on Henrico on Friday after losing the first matchup. Atley looking to do the same. They had the lead against Verina going into the fourth quarter at their place back in December. Verina came back to win 55 to 51. Each team has won seven out of their last eight games. Who will carry that momentum forward? We are just moments away as uh, Coach Randolph and company gets his team together. They're going to clap it up in the huddle. Now, Raven, you've actually played basketball with, uh, with one of these guys. I actually have. Um, Christian Cardin, a.k.a. CC3, he used to be on the Vipers. And, yeah, we were, we've been rivals forever now. And there it is, a score from earlier on December 10th. Verina beating it at Lee 55-51. Let's go uh, courtside and, uh, as we pay tribute uh, with the national anthem.
So just moments away from tip off and uh, we'll take another look courtside as we listen to the starting lineups. changes to their starting lineup. Atley no starting uh, lineup changes for them, and we are just moments away from tip-off. Verina and Atley again. Verina coming in, if you're just joining us, with a 14-3 sizzling record. Uh, seven of their last eight games have been victories. Atley comes in with a record of 11 and seven, uh, and seven on the year. They've won seven of their last eight. And the big man who will tip it off for Atley, number 10, Tyler Warren, the future Penn State tight end who could probably also play Division I basketball if he wanted to. Opposite <laughs> him, Alfonso Billups, leading scorer of the Verina Blue Devils. 17.9 points a game, so here's the tip. Controlled by Atley. Atley in the road dark navy blue, white and light blue trim, Verina in the home whites. Looks like early on this uh, playing a little zone defense. Yeah, it looks like Inside, it. it's Tyler Warren, and he connects for two. Atley with an early 2 nothing lead, and we mentioned him on the break, or out of the break anyway, that he can do it all inside and out. Mid-range jumper was good there. This can be anyone's game. Uh, through warm-ups and pass games, I've definitely seen a lot of hustle from both teams, and I look forward to seeing this being a very close game. Beautiful tip by Three was uh, no CC3. good, but the putback was there for Christian Cardin, otherwise known as CC3. And we've seen this before, this kind of defense. And it's going to work. It is an over and back. The press defense from Verina, we said that out of the break as well, gets the turnover and Verina back in possession, tied at two. Kind of a matchup zone look from Atley. And Verina is going to pop, stop, oh. not even draw iron. That is a whiff from Corey Harden. And Atley takes over with possession of the ball. Again, that press. Verina's going to do that. They are a very athletic bunch. Almost causes another turnover there. Saved by the graphic. Three from the corner. No. Miss. The ball's out of bounds and back to Verina. So two of the first three possessions for Atley end up going for two turnovers. And the Tyler Warren jump shot. Right now they're doing the maintenance of making sure all the kids have their shirts tucked in because that's so important to how well you play the game. Guys, are you tuck shirt guys or untuck shirt guys? I personally untuck my jersey whenever I play my sport. Raven, what about you? I'm also untucked. I really, really vibe with the Twinsies, bro. Twinsies. <laughs> I, can, I can give or take. It depends on the day. It depends on my mood. Another offensive board, but uh, that's oh. going to be traveling. And that is traveling on Verina. Atley regains possession. 6.09 to go in the first quarter. We are just underway with a 2-2 score. 
That ball's off the uh, leg. Kickball violation. You know, it, it kickball exactly out of bounds. In the NBA or college, they'd reset the shot clock, but there is no shot clock in high school. At lead to inbound. Brian's and playing lockdown defense. Yeah, that double team, Verina trying to take advantage and not let Atley get into their offense. Good passing there, but excellent help, but not to be stopped as Tyler Warren, and he has all four of Atley's points, and the Raiders have a 4-2 lead. Both teams have had very good ball movement, especially Atley with that last play, trying to get it inside the key as fast as possible. Um, but Verina should not be stopped with their... Offense. That's a good observation. If you're going to beat a zone, you need you need a good pass. Otherwise, you're settling for long jump shots, and the percentages are against you. Atley with a turnover. And so Verina's struggling against Atley's zone. Blue Devils and Raiders. Raiders with the ball, up to and looking to build that lead. Short J, back iron, no. Rebound, number four, Alfonso Billups. Oh, goes in the way inside, Beautiful up and pass. in. Christian Carden, CC three for two. Back even at four apiece. Atley trying to get past that hardcore Verina trap, and it is not working. They get a jump ball, possession goes back to the Blue Devils. Sean, talk about this pressure that Verina has given Atley early on so far. Uh, it looks like uh, Verina is coming out super hard when, it, when, when they inbound it. It looks like they're going straight for the neck and that they're going straight for the ball. Like they're coming up right as they inbound it and they're not letting them pass half court without their pressure. So still tied at four, Atley breaking the pressure once again after that Verina turnover. Back to the top of the key. Picking and prodding against that defense into Tyler Warren, never a bad option. Misses the layup though. Rebound goes to Corey Harden and Verina. On the move are the Blue Devils. Got a three ball, no. Too hard, back iron, rebound, Adley. Nicholas Conway. Over to the corner, back to Warren, top of the key, no. Tyler Warren is starting this game off really cold. He had a couple of buckets early, has not hit since. Verina quickly back the other way. The three, way off and strong. So I think the Blue Devils have been eating too many of their Wheaties today. Atley in the double team again. Raiders break the pressure. Nice pass cross court. It's a 2-3 zone. You can tell the two players near the top of the key and then the three inside. And then it's more of a box and one. We've got four corners and one, one man in the middle. A three ball. Got that one to go. Another one nylon. And Atley now up 7-4 as Verina takes it back up. Khalil Venable loses it. <laughs> Atley puts on the brakes and now oh, he missed it. Conway and then the putback is up and in. Raiders giving the Blue Devils all they want right now, up by five. Khalil Venable. Verina needs to drive and get inside to get some easier baskets, but you can see that two, three, or that box in one zone with Warren in the middle is going to be tough. There's a wide open shot if he wants it. Got it. Bro, Raven, guess what I just heard? Raven. Microsoft sponsors that one. Christian Carden with the three. Warren, got it. And it's 11 to 7. Verina's still trying to pick and prod. The pace is starting to pick up a little bit in this one, guys. Here's another open look from deep. Got nothing. Rebound. Atley Raiders. It's number 23, Kevin Hollins. 
Raiders in the front court now. Holland stops, passes it back out. Three ball, no, rebound. Finally, Verona corrals it with 1.33 to go. And then on the run, slam it down, big fella. CC3 with a jam. And we've got a traveling violation on the Atley Raiders. 11-9 the score. Christian Carden's been leading the way with Verina so far on offense. But, guys, it has not been easy against this, against this Atley Raider defense. And here's a look back at CC3 getting some air. And that's some really loud clapping in the old headset. Back to the corner for three. Verina back on offense. No, gets his own rebound. Great pass, and that'll work. Brought to you by Microsoft once again. Christian Carden, another Microsoft deuce. We're tied at 11 now. Both teams happy to just play zone here with just under a minute to go here in the first. Ones are wild. Raiders open man. Great ball movement in the corner of the three, no. And that's out of bounds. We'll see where they say it's going. And it'll be Verina basketball. Still tie score with 33 seconds. Let's see if Verina goes for the last shot here. There is no shot clock again in high school, so they can just hold on to the ball for the past 25 or look for a quick shot. Inside, Carden. He's been the money man so far. And they're going to call a traveling violation on that one. Malachi Plaskett with Malachi. the turnover. So... That was the very end of a putback you just saw right there. 10 seconds to go, Atley. Great pass on an eighth, slams it down. And good for two. Verina, one last heave. Oh, too strong. And we are at the end of the first quarter. The Atley Raiders with a two point lead, 13 11 over the Verina Blue Devils. So, Sean, let's talk about how this game has transpired. What's transpired is as we go to replay, and I completely changed my train of thought, and they asked to play the replay. There it is. Inside, well, we were talking about him. There he is. Tyler Warren has lived up to his billing. He's shot about maybe 50% from the field. He's had his share of misses, but he's carried the, Ver uh, the, the Verina offense. He's carried the Atley offense so far to six of their 13 points. Uh, meanwhile, Verina, on the other hand, it's been CC3, right? Yes, it has. They're both two big men. Holy, they are huge. It's been a battle of the big men. A couple of threes, but mainly a, a, a well-played defensive game so far through one quarter of play. So they put eight minutes back on the clock for the start of quarter number two. Raiders will inbound. At the top of the key, number 12, Malachi Plaskett. He is also a center. He's also a center student at Verona High School. Okay, he's one of you guys. He is. Nice pass inside. Verona doing a great job moving the basketball, as is Atley on this possession. Now it's Verona's chance to move it, and they're going to try to go quick. I don't blame them. All the way up to the rack, no. Second chance. They say it's off of Atley. It'll stay with the Blue Devils. And there is Plaskett inbounding, stolen by Warren. It's a two-on-one break. Up and no, but the rebound by Warren is knocked away. Somehow the Blue Devils save it. The Blue Devils are definitely bringing up their hype and energy, and I could see a lot more ball movement and hustle overall. Amazing on our oh. team. Nice shooting helps as well as Alfonso Billups connects for three. 
And Verina has the lead back at 14-13. Atlee battling his box in one zone. Cross court pass and another. Two in one possession, you don't see that very often. That shot is way wide of the mark, but there's Tyler Warren, he just could not finish. Second chance for Atlee, goes awry. Verina on the move again and there's contact and a foul. And I think they're gonna call that on Ralph Axel the fourth. Actually went to middle school with Ralph Axel the fourth. Me and him, me and him went to Short Pump Elementary together. Short Pump Elementary, back yes. in the day. Carden, no, rebound, yes, but they're gonna call over the back. You know, there's, there, there is quite a tradition with the Axels as we look at this tackle football game of a foul and then more clapping there is a foul on the floor is it offensive or are they going to call that a block looks like they're calling it a block so Warren was fouled and the refs are going to have a talk about this I don't know what they're discussing we we're talking about the axels you have one axel on the court playing for atlee tonight you have rally axel the coach of the atlee raiders who is the nephew of ron axel if you want to go all the way up the family tree he was a head coach for the godwin eagles football team winning his godwin football coach so there's your axels Thank you for that ancestry. There you go. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Ali's passing the ball really good right now. They're doing, they're very patient. They've done a good job not settling for bad shots. As I say that, that one goes off the front iron. Carden with the rebound. He's going to take on the entire Atlee team, then he decides to back it back out. Khalil Venable, one of the heroes with the ball right now, hit four of five from three-point land in the fourth quarter to beat Henrico on Friday night. And there he is with the ball, gets it into card. Nice spin move inside, but he doesn't have the kiss. No touch. And Atlee's got the ball back. Verine is going with tempo. Atlee's saying, we're going to pass the heck out of the ball. And, well, I'll just shoot it if you're going to leave me open. Warren, the rebound, the putback, up and in. He got it. And Atlee back on top by one. It's 15-14. Verina driving. That lane's cut off. Good defense from Atlee there. Carden loses the ball, thinks there's contact. But Atlee gets the rebound. As we go away from live action to this rebound from Tyler Warren, he puts it back up and in. And as he did that, we just missed a bucket from number 13, Ralph Axel Jr., your old middle school teammate from Short Pump Elementary. <laughs> or middle. Yeah. 17-14. Was he a good basketball player in middle school? Uh, not middle school, elementary school. And, you know, we used to play on the park all the time together. Um, I'd always be the captain. I'd draft him first. Uh, he'd be like, he, he was like my Zion, my Zion Williamson. He was your Zion Williamson. Yeah, that's, he some, was, that's some heavy praise. Yeah. Foul called underneath. I don't know if he's quite big enough to be Zion Williams. Uh, kind of needs to fill in a little bit, get a little bit bigger to be uh, around Zion. Yeah, he's Zion's. only like 200 pounds short. <laughs> exactly. So William Sutkus will inbound this. He hit a big three in a last minute win against Highland Springs just about a week ago. And he's got the ball now. He backs it up. Could get a five second violation and he does. That's great. 
defensive play by Malachi Plaskett to get the turnover. Rally XL doesn't like that call. But when you've got the ball and the ref's right next to you and he's, he's counting to five, that means you've got to disengage with that defender. You've got to pass the basketball. You cannot just hold on to it there. You've got to make some sort of move. Or you're going to get a five-second violation. Three in the corner, no. Rebound. Back to Atley. And Sutkus loses the ball, but back inside with the putback. Another offensive board for the Raiders. It's Camandre Claiborne. 19-14 at Lee, up by five. Verina, nice pass underneath, but can they finish up? And no, Warren was too much, and he gets the rebound. Tyler Warren loses the handle, and it's going to go back to Verina. Just over three minutes to go here, 19-14 at Lee, up five. There's Kelly Jackson, Kelly Action Jackson. She works in TV services department, Nine Mile Road Government Center. Atley in that 2-3 zone again. Looking for a little pick and roll action here, not taking it. Nice move to the hoop. No with a finish, rebound no. Another chance, can't get it to go. Oh, he gets the bonus to go. Khalil Venable for two. That reminded me of one of my old uh, possessions back in YMCA basketball when I played in middle school. Most offensive rebounds by one player in the same possession. Simsbury YMCA League in Connecticut. That's going to be a jump ball underneath. As Atlee's lead has been cut to three. Two and a half to go. Venable will bring it up court. Fun fact, neither team has shot a free throw yet. And that's going to be a traveling violation. Another fun fact, both teams have turned the ball over a lot. <laughs> I'm surprised they have no, neither team has shot a free throw yet uh, due to the aggressiveness that it's out on the court. Well, a lot of that's part of the reason why, uh, and both teams are doing it, but that's one of the reasons why teams will play zone. You, it's, it's kind of a pro versus con concept. The pro is it makes it so much harder for an offense to go inside against your defense and get quality looks. you got to settle for more jump shots, which means you don't shoot the ball well. The con is, the negative aspect is, it's really hard to rebound out of, and you've seen each team have second chance opportunities. Now, with passes like that, it can work. Warren not able to convert, but I think he will finally be at the free throw line. So yeah, they're gonna call a push, and Warren will go for the first free throws of the night. You know, you don't think about it as he makes the first shot, but Tyler Warren, when you see him in person, you say, yeah, I can see that that guy's a tight end and a football player. You can see why the Nittany Lions of Penn State want him to play football for him. Definitely a big guy. He hits both free throws. Got a good release on his free throw as well. About two minutes to go until the half. Verina trails Atley, 21-16. This would be a big-time quality win for the Raiders if they could pull it off. You can see why their first matchup was so close. Better passing for Verina this possession, and it gets rewarded. Khalil Venable for two. Going back to the pressure is Verina. I really like the way the Blue Devils have changed their defensive schemes throughout the first half. Great passing, though, and Atley on the money. Kevin Hollins, Holly for three. 24-18 the score. Atley up six, make that four. Nice cut to the basket by Amari Baylor. And Verona gets right back into it. Now here comes Atley. Like a bull in a china shop, he gets fouled. Ryan Cocken will go to the line.
cheerleaders act like they're happy about that foul, but they're not. So Ryan Culkin will shoot this one up, and he makes the first free throw. 25-20 the score. By the way, if you guys notice, Atley, when they shoot free throws, they keep their entire defense, except for the shooter, back. They don't have anyone on that free throw line. That One, they trust the free throw shooter is going to make it. He missed that one. But two, it keeps the offense from coming down the court and getting the easy bucket in transition. Atley with the rebound. Verina no good there. And they're going to speed it up a little. Great pass underneath. Can he finish? Yes, he can. Like Bob the Builder. Ralph Axel of Worth. 2-3 zone showed by Atley again, 27-20. Raiders up a touchdown on Verina in football. That never happened, would it? At least not this year. Stu Brown and company really had that team humming all the way to the state semifinals. Atley with a steal. Finds a handle. Oh, can he finish? Yes, a nice alley-oop. Tyler Warren was money. 25 seconds to go, Atley extends their lead. That shot, no, rebound, got it, but it's gonna go off for Rina. 29-20, Atley up nine with 19.7 seconds to go. Here it is again. The pass and then the alley-oop. Guys, Atley's just been a better passing team so far in the first half. And there they are again. Not enough mustard on it. 10 seconds to go. Verina looking for a last second shot. Up and no. Rebound Atley. They have a shot now. Goes for the pass and the lay in. That's going to end the half. Tyler Warren started the scoring. Tyler Warren's going to finish the scoring here in the first half as the Atley Raiders have a 31 to 20 halftime lead. And I'll tell you what, Coach Randolph's going to have some work to do in that locker room to get his team ready in the third quarter as Verina trails 31 20. Guys, uh, just quick takeaways from the first half. Definitely with Atley, I've seen that their free throws have definitely been up from previous in the season. Um, I can see that they've been trying to get the ball around more and hustling more on offense and defense for that matter. They've really been stepping it up. And same with Verina. And defensively, Verina's had a lot of trouble against Atley's 2-3 zone. I wonder if we're going to see more deliberate offensive possessions slowing it down or maybe, maybe Verina tries to make some work on offense by getting a rebound and putting it up and in. Yeah, for sure. If Verona wants to beat this defense, they're going to need to pass the ball better and more efficiently and push the inside zone. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Guys, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back for the start of the second half in mere minutes. <laughs> 